Hello, so I'm Camilla Jodwick, and I'm a postdoc working with um, James DiCarlo and Nancy Kanbeja. And I just uh, arrived at MIT a couple of months ago, so I will uh, tell you about the project I'm planning on doing. And the title is Explaining Brain Area Scaling and Topography um, in Monkey and Human IT with Deep Neural Networks. So um, we all here are interested in understanding in the brain, and some of us are building the models of the brain. So deep nets have been shown to be promising models, and they explain a lot of variants in brain representations. However, they don't really explain the full variants. And, and that there are definitely differences between the brain and the deep net. So how do brains differ from deep nets? Would introducing this uh, brain-inspired constraint bring to the gap between the deep nets and the brain, so the deep nets really can reflect what is represented in the brain. So this is a, a list that I compiled from the brain-inspired constraint, the differences between deep nets and brains, and they can be divided into anatomical learning rule, task, and training based. And uh, the question is, do any of these differences matter to the ability of deep nets to really uh, model the brain? So today I will just talk about two anatomical constraints. So the first one is the number of neurons. So AlexNet IT, so layer seven, has 4,000 neurons. The monkey brain IT has 70 million neurons, and the human IT has almost 300 million neurons. So of course it will be slightly tricky to be the deepness with 300 million neurons in IT, but still we can take uh, this data and kind of try to build in more neurons in deep nets to so make the layers wider and also try to account for the layer sizes to match the sizes of the areas in the brain and build a model for a monkey and for a human to account for the species differences. So have the monkey deep net and the human deep net and look how they differ and how they may model monkey and human brain differently. And the second constraint is um, that there's no topography in present in the deep net, so we should build in the topography in the deep net. So this is the work from Hioli, this model. So this is the topographical maps on the brain, uh, shown by Rosa from Nancy's lab. We can see face, color, and place selective areas, and we want to kind of get that in the network. So what she did, she takes the uh, AlexNet and puts a topographical constraint in a loss function, um, and where we say neurons with similar response properties should be located in a proximity. So we basically mim minimize the wiring cost. And the question is, do this number of neurons and topographical constraints really matter for the deep net representations? Can they bring the dimensionality of the deep net closer to the dimensionality of the brain? So dimensionality is an important property of the brain for example, we know we have so many neurons in the brain, but a lot of them, they are really redundant. And, and also, we have so many cells in retina, but also we have only several color dimensions. So the number of neurons should affect the dimensionality, and it should increase the, number, the dimensionality. The more neurons we have, the higher dimensionality we should have. And the topography should bring the dimensionality down. Um, so when we look at the AlexNet layer 7, and, and AlexNet with this topographical constraint, uh, my preliminary results show that there's a 17% reduction in the dimensionality. So we see what we expected, that when you have dimensionality, the topographical constraint, the dimensionality goes down. So the overall goal is really to explore the implementing brain-like constraints in deep nets to better explain our brain and behavior. Um, so I talk only about two anatomical constraints, number of neurons and topography, and, and how they affect the dimensionality, but also we can discuss other uh, constraints later on. So I'm happy to talk more about it during the breaks. Thank you for your attention.